Welcome to This Is Country TV. This week I'm here in Mineola, Texas. I'm going to meet up with some town historians and get some history on the town. We're going to go see a friend of mine at the leather shop. I'm going to eat barbecue at Cowburner's restaurant, show you a really nice bed and breakfast, and we're going to end it all at the Mineola Volunteer Fire Department Rodeo. In this fast-paced world we live in, I like to take the road less traveled. I love small towns that haven't changed in years and ranchers set in their ways. Back road driving, small town dining, long dusty trails, and horses fast as hell. Windmills in Palm Jack, so hey, forgotten Brock. town. How's it going, man? Good. What are we going to do today? Like it? Cold as devils, stars light up the ground. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the final event. We're going to go out and try to get some hogs. Dream whistle blowing, can't you hear that lonesome sound? Going <laughs> <laughs> through the darkness, moving through your town. We're going to be in Fairfield, Texas today. If you would like to help out another wish kid, go to westernwishes.org. We're well, now drinking no crow whiskey. We're in Burt Burnett, Texas. We call it never been. Never know what you're gonna get. The cowboy way of life is still alive and well, and I want to take you along for the ride. Visiting small towns and ranches with some of the best people you can find. Now, to me, this is country. Well, we're here in Mineola. This is the old train depot. Really cool stuff in here. Got a lot of history, and I've got two people here that have grown up in this town. They've seen it change and, and go through a lot of different stuff, Wayne and Lou. And uh, Wayne, if you don't mind to start us off, kind of tell us how uh, Mineola came about. How Mineola basically got, came about because of the railroad. Uh, in 1873 or sometime before that, there was a the, the two, two railroads were building in this area, and they both got here about the same time. And so it caused a junction of two railroads, one come, both coming out of the north. And uh, they built a depot or a, a settlement to build the railroads. And as that settlement grew, it grew into a town. And the town eventually was uh, incorporated in 1873. And, uh, and the town built from the railroad from that side on. Now a lot of towns uh, that were built on the railroad end up having a highway that comes through and kind of routing around them. Uh, so Mineola, uh, as you were talking earlier, has had several different times uh, of uh, kind of regrouping and, and finding new ways to uh, keep the downtown going. So talk us through some of that. Well, the uh, railroad was the direct route and the best route going east and west. And so uh, on the Highway 80, which was the first southern route coast to coast, it more or less followed the railroad. And they came through Mineola direct. So Mineola had the railroad as a transportation made for a hub, and then the highway coming through. It made it both transportation both ways. But the railroad made it a hub early on because uh, the stores that developed here would bring their merchandise in on the railroad, and then people from all over would come in to buy from those stores. The cotton crop was a big crop in the early 30s, late 20s and early 30s. Because of the railroad, we had a cotton gin here. The farmers would bring their, their uh, cotton in in the wagon, and the cotton gin would suck it up and then separate the seeds out in the rot. Then we had a cotton compress that would put it into the bales. And then the Bales Bay would then be brought to the railroad for shipment, both east and west. Now, Lou, you uh, you actually had talked just a little bit about the with with uh, farmers around here when they had the watermelons and and trying to push that they uh, had the watermelon festival. Yes, they had the watermelon watermelon festival, and it was quite something because all the girls, high school age girls, were competed so they could be the watermelon queen or the princes and all style shows and all 
but the one thing that I also had a big pageant, but one thing that they did and that always caught people's attention because back then it, traffic wasn't quite like it was today on Highway 80, so they went out on Highway 80 and they would set up a booth and the farmers would bring their watermelon and they would cut them up and they would stop the cars as they came by and they would give them a slice of watermelon and invite them to come enjoy the watermelon festival here in Mineola. Well, Mineola, Mineola's downtown is a national historic district. Um, so we have great history here in town, uh, but we also have great new things. We have great shops. Um, we're mostly known for our antique shops. So we have great um, antiques here in town, maybe over at Between Friends, Uniques and Antiques. Uh, lots of great finds in there. We also have great restaurants here in town. We have Calburner's Barbecue and Tap Room. Um, that's a great barbecue place we have. We also have um, we see uh, kitchens, hardware and deli. We also have East Texas Burger Company. That one's pretty known. People like to come from all around and try out their food over there. Um, so that's some, some great places. We also have great boutiques all over Mineola um, that y'all should come and definitely try out. <laughs> all right guys, I'm here at Calburners and uh, this is Jason. Jason opened this uh, restaurant up a year or so ago and I have the pleasure to be here and to taste all this good food. So I'm gonna talk with Jason for just a minute, let him explain to you how he got started, the food that they have here and uh, just a little bit of what you want to come and see yourself. So how did you get started? Uh, well, you know, when I was a kid, my dad and I did barbecue in the backyard all the time. Uh, we did our first barbecue competition when I was 20, 1997. This business, or this building became available and I talked to an old, old high school friend of mine who's been a good buddy all my life. And uh, he, had the, he had the funding, I had the know-how, and we both had the gumption. So uh, we jumped on it built it out you know, ourselves, and, and here we are. We've been in this building for a year and two months after a year in the trailer, so. It's one of the oldest buildings here in Mineola. A um, lot of character, you know, you can see the brick walls and all that stuff. But. So talk us through, you have a very unique dish. Um, sure. Talk us through the pork rind nachos. I don't yeah. know what you call it. Yeah, but. that's it, the pork rind nachos. Um, it's just kind of something we wanted to try to, to be different, set ourselves apart, you know. So, um, we, we fresh fry the pork rinds. Um, they come out crackling and popping, you know, like you, like you want them. You know, that, that's where the name came from, right? Cracklings. And uh, the, you get your, your bowl with the queso and your meat and sauce and sour cream and chives and jalapenos. And, you know, just kind of, we season them with our, our fry spice and our okra. The same, we use it for our fries, our okra, our, our pork rinds. And, uh, you know, you get a fresh, fresh, crispy dip every time, you know, it's just. It's a unique item. People clamor for it. You know, uh, all the keto folks will get it. You know, whenever it's because there's you know it's a way to get a good crunch without yeah. having a lot of carbs, and so people really enjoy it. Well, it's definitely one of my favorites for sure, and it's something that's different. Um, very, very good. I don't know uh, why nobody else is, is stealing <laughs> your idea, but well, that that now. is that is awesome. <laughs> So I'm Ashley Unger and I moved from Dallas, Texas to Mineola, small town. Uh, my husband and I um, really wanted to uh, buy this bed and breakfast here and we interned with the previous owners for about seven months and to get an idea of what it would be like and we fell in love with the community. We fell in love with um, the historic town, downtown, um, we fell in love with the people here. Okay, so the history of the manor uh, was pretty neat. It's, uh, it was built in 1898 uh, by Gustav Munzesheimer. He was a 
uh, first generation Jewish immigrant and then we bought it in uh, 2013 and so our property uh, has six rooms um, as of last year it had seven but we actually in January just converted one to be a spa um, so we do have an on-site spa now. Uh, Daniel Luther does all kinds of spa services. We're really proud of that <laughs> um, because our guests can now relax even more um, by you know enjoying her spa services. Um, we have three cottages. Um, they're uh, located just about 20 feet from the house, and so you still get that real intimate feel. They're not out in the woods or anything, <laughs> um, but they're uh, they're all really unique. They're fashioned after you know the history of the town. And uh, then we have three rooms in the main house, the Victorian home, um, that have their own, you know, kind of Victorian uh, appeal to them. And uh, we try to keep the property feeling very German or very European style, uh, country European, I like to say, because um, it, you know, makes people feel at home. And um, we do a full service B and B here, so it, which is a little bit harder to find these days. So uh, the Munsisheimer Manor is is located one block from 69 and 80, which is our historic downtown district. And guests can walk to uh, eat. They can walk to shop. Um, you don't need a vehicle to visit us. You can vi come in on the Amtrak train if you like. Um, and uh, if you'd like to book with us, you can book by phone or you can book by our website, uh, which is www.mensasheimer.com. I want to introduce you to Gracie Christian. She has Christian Custom Leather here in Mineola, Texas. Has a really neat shop here in the old part of town. And uh, Gracie, I want you to tell us how you got started in leather work. Well, I got started in leather work when I was in college. Um, I actually needed a belt at the time and I made one. And it kind of went from there. I, I actually bought my own tools off of Facebook from a guy that was selling out. And I started out in my grandpa's dairy barn when I moved home from college. And I was there for quite a while. Well, it just expanded and things got huge and I needed more room. I ended up in a little shop just down the road from here. And nobody could find me. Like It was like a dungeon. Nobody could find me at all. And then I found this place for rent. And I'm in this shop now with a storefront. And that's kind of where I'm at now. So things are going pretty good. That's awesome. And so would you, I guess your grandfather got you started into the Western lifestyle? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, he used to train horses for a living. And um, he ranched and all that his whole life. So a major influence in what you're doing yes. now. Great time. And uh, you also work with some horses, ride some some horses in yeah. the evenings? Yeah, in the evenings I ride for Wade Stewart, uh, Stewart Performance Horses, and he trains cutters. Um, I've worked for him for about two and a half years now, and he's another big influence in my leather work. He just kind of pushes me to keep going, and don't ever quit, no matter how frustrated you get. And, but yeah, I work here in the morning times, and then in the evening times I go to his house and ride for him. Okay, so talk us through some of the uh, the things that you do. Obviously, belts and, and leggings, because you made me a pair. So, yeah. uh, what are some of the other things you pull? Yeah, um, welding arm pads are a big deal right now. Um, rope cans are another big deal. Uh, mainly anything that you can think of, I can probably make it. It might take me a little while, but I can do it. I made the rodeo queen crowns for the rodeo this year, which was a pretty big hit. Um, I like to get creative and do things that no one else has ever done before. And so would you say, uh, what, what's probably one of your favorite? Do you like doing uh, repetitive type tooling or do you like getting creative with things? I like getting creative. Um, I like to make my imagination kind of run wild and go after something way different compared to anyone else's work. So now how long have you been, how long has it been since you've been doing this? Uh, I've actually been doing a lot of work four years now, but I've been at it, uh, it'll be a year in August, uh, full time, doing it full time. And what is the favorite thing? To tool? Uh, welding arm pads are my big, big favorite. Is it because it's kind of a small piece that you can get you get creative with and then get done and move on to something else? Well, not necessarily that. Um, I kind of get the guys that order it from me they are just like, kind of run wild with it and then I can get pretty fancy with it. Well guys, if you want anything custom leather, any kind of thing, anything tooled, uh, go check her out. She's on social media. Uh, it's uh, Christian Custom Leather. You can look them both up on there. Yeah, and if you're in Mineola, come by here. She's in that old part of town. We just, uh, two doors down from Cowburners, right here in Mineola, Texas. Lord we pray that we'll wrap your hand of protection around each and every contestant, horse, bull, calf that may be entering this arena as well as our rodeo athletes. May you protect them, keep them safe, 
And, and, and may they leave Mineola in one piece, Lord. Lord, we pray for our military men and women stationed wherever they may, may be. We're so thankful for their for our, for their livelihood, which keeps us free and keeps us enjoying what we enjoy, the sport of rodeo. Lord, we pray that we'll never lose sight of our ultimate goal, which is the eternal heavenly home with you. Pray for our nation's leaders and leaders of nations throughout the world. May they look to you for guidance. And may we always be a Christian nation on the beliefs in which we were founded well over 200 years ago. All these things we ask, if it be your will, in Christ's name we pray. Amen. This town, it's a changing, but I feel the same. Guess everything's different but me The old stomping grounds are all stomped out For all the slow rolling tumbleweeds I guess I look a little broken From my hat to my toes My belt buckle's fading now But it was sure shiny back in 89 But now's the best damn hand around so slide on over, mama, I'ma tell you something, darling I'm a spit and son of the road well, I've been raised on the miles, crazy living, living high And I ain't got much to show, but I rode the wild horses Well, big lights used to shine past the fairground sign there's a line of cars past the gate And people climbing on the fence To catch a glimpse of a bronc buster fighting for aid Well, I'm a patchwork of scars posted at the bar Cause the pain ain't up and left Where these beers taste old and the rodeo cold But they ain't killed me yet Tell you something, darling, I'm a spit firing son of the road. Well, I've been raised on the miles, crazy living, living high. And I ain't got much to show, but I rode the wild horses. The freight liners burn up the highway through town And as we reach the edge I look up from my edge To see the lights of the rodeo ground So slide on over mama I'ma tell you something darling I'm a spit fire and son of the road I've been raised on the miles Crazy living, living high And I ain't got much to show Son of the road Well, I've been raised on my miles Crazy living, living high And I ain't got much to show But I rode the wild horses Yeah, I rode the wild horses Oh, come on, baby sold out of everything in the concession stand so um, yeah it was a good it was a good year this year 56 years of this rodeo these guys have been putting on I'm sure leading up to you probably scratch your heads and wonder why you're doing it and then afterwards you're, you're thinking of how to make it better uh, going through that those 56 years what kind of changes I'm sure you've had some ups and downs along the way got new bleachers cooked two or three years ago and 
and we're just making it better for everybody. Um, yeah, we plan on being here for a while, so everything we can do to make it better, we're going to do. So you guys want to talk just a minute about the money that you raise, what it does throughout the year? So out of that money that we get on the volunteer side, we go down to, for training-wise, we go down to Texas A&M to the fire field down there and take specialized classes uh, for the ones that have already been through the fire academy or progressed through all the different fire stages that training that they are. Uh, other than that, we use it for gear whenever it gets torn or whatever. We're constantly sending gear in for repairs, uh, tires. That's usually what we do with all of our our money that comes in from the public and helps us put our rodeo on. Yeah. And in the property here, uh, it's my understanding you guys used to lease this property and then now you have just uh, recently yes. purchased it. Yes, we leased this for forever. Um, a local foundation here, uh, Meredith Foundation, which gives a lot of grants to local organizations, they gave us the money to buy the place. Uh, it's 10 acres. and. Uh, we can do pretty much what, what we need to do with it, and it's ours, so we don't mind spending the extra money on it. So. Awesome. Well, guys, that is what this show is all about. Small towns, good people that come together to uh, help each other out, and that's what this, uh, this rodeo does right here. The community comes together. It supports the local fire department here, and uh, that all goes back into town, and people are spending money in the you know, gas stations, staying the night. They're uh, eating at the restaurants and everything, so I enjoyed coming out. David, it was uh, great talking with sure. you. Justin, thank, thank you. you Appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode here in Mineola, Texas. The town's full of good people, a lot of cool things to do, shops, and a really neat old downtown. I'm leaving with some new leggings, and you guys be sure to tune in next week as we travel to another town to show you the country way of life. <laughs>